Hey there, once again, YouTube. Right now it's 2.04 p.m. Pacific Time, September 4th, 2019. Still have not gotten out my monthly update that should be in the next couple days. I'm really trying to get that out soon. And the analysis page on the Mount Shasta Rapid Fire Earthquake Swarm from September 2nd through September 3rd um, has not been up yet. Should be up by tonight, so keep an eye out for that. I will probably put it on a YouTube post. Not a YouTube video, but a YouTube post just telling you guys that it's up and a Facebook post as well. Here we have a live webcam shot from the webcam at Kilauea called there, looking into Hali Malmal Crater. The water level of the new lake within Kilauea continues to rise without any significant rainfall. It is most likely groundwater now. It is most likely going to be groundwater that is protruding into the Hali Malmal Crater. Now let's go to Hawaii for the past 24 hours of all magnitudes. And you'll notice 41 earthquakes have been reported. There was a good size increase in seismicity um, in the Pahala area with some deep earthquakes within the mantle plume and some spasmodic tremor as well. But we also saw some significant, significant as in the past since the eruptions calm, some significant swarming within Kilauea called there underneath Haimau Mau Crater. Let me put on chain. And a lot of it is very shallow, guys. Very shallow. Three kilometers, four kilometers, three kilometers, zero kilometers. We had a deep one down to the south down here, but that's Pahala, Hawaii. Here, let me go up a little bit. There we go. 12.5 kilometers in depth. Probably the deepest I saw. Let's see. Yeah, that's pretty much the... Oh, nope. 15.6 kilometers in depth was a pretty deep one. So there are some changes taking place within the magmatic system at Kilauea Caldera. Um, uplift still continues at the Mauna Loa Summit, the Kilauea Summit, and the Kilauea East Rift Zone. It still continues, guys. It's still not stopping. Now, I want you guys to notice something very, very intriguing. Let's go to Swarm just real quick. Here, let me zoom in real fast. Here we have Seismic Station OTLD and CPKD. They reside right here at Kilauea called there. OTLD is just to the south, just barely, basically right on the rim, and just about a kilometer or two to the west, we have CPKD. Let's go back to the seismic program swarm right now. Let's start with uh, OTLD, actually. Let's start with this. Now, this is from September 3rd through September 4th, somewhat through September 4th. I tried to get the most recent data, but that was about an hour ago. But I just want to show what has already been shown. Now, to start off, to start off, we did see a blatant spasmodic tremor event, and I've talked about that a lot. Yet, if you guys want to know what spasmodic tremor is and what it means for volcanic activity on the Big Island of Hawaii, just go to the link section in the description box below and look for what are Hawaii's spasmodic tremors. Now, this one was a little bit stranger. It was a little bit less of tremor. There's a little bit more tremor at the end, but it started with multiple earthquakes with mid to low range frequencies of those earthquakes occurring in rapid succession. Don't, now, most spasmodic tremor occurs within the mantle plume conduit, and a lot of the reported spasmodic tremor events occur near Pahala, Hawaii. But this, I don't know, this was a very, very strange-looking spasmodic tremor event. So maybe it occurred underneath Kilauea Caldera near the same similar depths. I don't know for sure, but I'm just putting that out there just in case. But that's not what I wanted to talk about. That's not what I wanted to talk about. Now, do you remember the uh, drumbeat earthquake swarms at Mount St. Helens? Remember during the 2004-2008 eruptive activity? And here we see a picture that I took during my journey to Mount St. Helens uh, on August 13, 2019, this year. Um, we do see that it talks about the drumbeat earthquake swarms. Now, the drumbeat swarms that were appearing at Kilauea during the past few days don't even come close to what Mount St. Helens saw in October of 2004. However, it is very, very similar, and I thought I'd let you guys know because it definitely is related to volcanic activity underneath Kilauea called there, and you'll see that in just a second. So from about, I'm going to say October 2nd, on October 2nd, 2004, 50 minute long harmonic tremor caused by rising magma and gas triggered the evacuation of thousands of people from Johnston Ridge Observatory. And this is at Johnston Ridge Observatory. We're going to take a look at the data from this seismic station right here, or one very, very close to it, of this same data stream that they're showing on their wall right here. And we're going to take a look at the similarities between the rapid fire rhythmic drum beat characteristics of the Mount St. Helens events to the Kilauea drumbeat swarms that we saw in the past few days. Now, a lot of people claim drumbeat swarms all the time. Now, if you see a few earthquakes occur in rapid succession with a rhythmic pattern, that's not really a drumbeat swarm. I mean, it can, can it kind of can, but if it's only a few events and it calms down, I would just move on. 
However, this occurred for over like 30 minutes to an hour and then happened, almost happened again. But the rhythm, but the rhythm of the second drum beat swarm wasn't really a drum beat swarm, so it was very interesting. But a lot of low frequency earthquakes have been appearing at Kilauea called there over the past few days, some of them in a drum beat rhythmic pattern. So let's take a look at the Mount St. Helens events just real fast. Here we have seismic data from SHW in the UW network, uh, short period vertical. And we do see right here, and we do see, excuse me, whoops, I don't know what happened. There we go. And going back to the map, SHW is located right here on the slopes of Mount St. Helens right there. We're going to take a look at the data right here. I have 120 minutes per line. This is not a typical heli quarter that you usually see. I extended the time period for 48 hours for the time range vertically and 120 minutes horizontally. Just so you can see, all of these are earthquakes. All of these are drum beat events. We do have harmonic tremor right here. Actually, wait a second. Where did that harmonic tremor go? Where? Oh, here it is. All right. We saw harmonic tremor right here at Mount St. Helens during the 2004 eruptive activity, 2004-2008. We do see rapid fire, constant, constant drum beat earthquakes, and most of them are low frequency earthquakes, except these ones have a little bit higher frequencies than what we saw at Kilauea, maybe because they are stronger, and the process and the type of magma involved at Mount St. Helens is completely different than at Kilauea, but I just wanted you guys to see this, just to kind of see the drum beat pattern. Notice the rhythm. Some of it is not completely rhythmic, but some of it is and with dominant lower frequencies too, as you can see. Now, let's go to OTLD and see what happened. Starting out about, I'm gonna say, let's see, I'm gonna say starting with this earthquake, no, wait, oh, oh, oh. I'm gonna say, let's just say it started at 809 UTC. Let's zoom out. Notice on the spectrogram plot, we see multiple earthquakes occurring in rapid succession. Very teeny tiny earthquakes, but earthquakes nonetheless. Very small, guys, I mean, the amplitude count, only goes to what 70 or 80 so these are very small low frequency earthquakes these are low frequency earthquakes with dominant frequencies below 5 hertz and barely any strength at all going past 10 hertz making these low frequency earthquakes notice how they are occurring in rhythmic succession this is at Kilauea called there and then look at the rhythm of these right here look at that look at that guys that is almost perfectly rhythmic showing that magma possibly could be intruding, and possibly getting closer to the groundwater, guys. Something is shifting underneath Kilauea. Here's a look at one of the low-frequency events. Looks very similar to a DLP, a deep long period event. <clears throat> Excuse me. Going forward, we see continued low-frequency earthquakes, but the frequencies start to rise just a little bit. Let's see. It, it started to rise. Dominant frequencies are below about 7 hertz, and with barely any uh, frequencies going beyond 11 hertz. So they almost turn into mid-frequency earthquakes, which really there's no such thing as a mid-frequency earthquake. And these are obviously not high-frequency earthquakes. So continuing forward, notice how they start to get so close together, you barely can separate them with your eye. Notice how in rip, rapid succession these are occurring. Look at all these guys. These are drumbeat earthquakes. Very weak drumbeat earthquakes, but drumbeat quakes nonetheless. And it continues and continues and continues and then at the end they occur so quickly and start to die off that it turns into some type of volcanic tremor because they're occurring in such rapid succession they literally are occurring basically at the same time and then it just slowly dies down slowly dies down right there notice that so we did see a drum beat swarm which not even during the 2018 eruptions I didn't even see drum beats swarming like this in the 2018 eruptions, guys. So I thought that was very, very, very intriguing. I, I'm definitely going to make a post about this. Look at these are all earthquakes. And I'll prove that here. Let's go to OTLD. Here, let's close out the Mount St. Helens one. Let's go to OTLD and go to the same. Whoa. Whoa, where'd it go, buddy? Uh-oh, I lost it. I lost it. Let's go back. Let's open CPKD one more time. There we go. We're going to go to the same time period on the 3rd, right here, notice September 3rd, starting at about, let's say, 8.09 or so, UTC. Now, it shows much weaker over here because it probably was occurring a little bit closer to OTLD, but you can still see the rhythmic pattern is here as well. Very weak, low-frequency drum beat patterns, but they are nonetheless. So something was definitely going on 
under Kilway called there during this time frame. I'm guessing this is probably the largest at around 839.30 UTC. Let's go to 839.30 UTC on here. Come on, buddy. 839.30, where are you? Come on. 839.30 would be this one right here. Had some higher frequencies at the beginning as the frequencies started to rise a little bit. Actually, they started completely low frequency earthquakes. Notice that? And then as you get go forward, you notice the frequencies did start to rise as they became more intense. So something definitely was taking place down there. And we see the same type of pattern here. Let's zoom out. See the same type of pattern here on the spectrogram right here. Spectrogram plot on CPKD. So we know it's not surface noise. We know it's not a surface, uh, excuse me, surface event. Now, number two, we did see increased seismicity during this time frame after the drumbeat swarming. Some more quakes did pop off at Kilauea Caldera. Let's go back to OTLD, which is a little bit closer to Kilauea. I'm going to use this. Notice our earth. Oh, my goodness. I don't know why I lost that, too. Let's open back up OTLD. Okay. Seismicity did increase. You could tell. Not everything is uh, completely seismic, though. Here, let's go right here. We did see some more low frequency earthquakes involved right here around 12 to 13 UTC, occurring in a drumbeat pattern again, then kind of calmed down. Then we did see some higher frequency earthquakes. It was kind of off and on, guys. It was kind of off and on, off and on. Some more earthquakes, more earthquakes. Not seeing that big drumbeat pattern. And then we saw multiple earthquakes striking again. Those are not earthquakes. Uh, right about here. Another one right here as well. A few more right here, and we did have some more low-frequency earthquakes occurring. Almost looks like harmonic tremor, but it's not. You can tell these are lower-frequency earthquakes with barely any frequencies going beyond 10 or 11 hertz. And going forward, oh, let's go back to the spectrogram. We see more low-frequency events, which actually could be part of the spasmodic tremor. Because as we see right here, I do believe this is part of the spasmodic tremor event that occurred prior to the second burst of drumbeat swarming. Or at least kind of drumbeat swarming. Sorry if I'm talking a lot, guys. There's a lot of information I'm trying to pile into this video with such little time that I have. So spasmodic tremor occurred, right? Then we saw those weird squiggly things, which only show up basically on one station. So I don't even know what those are. Some type of weird interference or something. Let's zoom in. More low-frequency earthquakes. Notice that? More low-frequency earthquakes involved with the kilowatt system. Now, in retrospect, here are high-frequency earthquakes. Notice they look much, much different. The waveform spacings are much closer together. More more high-frequency quakes. And look, high-frequency quake, low-frequency quake. So we are seeing, sorry to say low-frequency, take a shot every time I say low-frequency earthquake. You'd be drunk by the time the video's over. <laughs> no, but really, though. We did see an increase in low-frequency activity at Kilauea Caldera, which to me is a sign that something is changing with the magma system down below. And right here, 606 UTC, we did see two low-frequency events. Going forward, we see another one started to increase again around 6 UTC. And then we see more. Just a few more. Keep going forward. We see more. We see more. And then let's go down to this line right down here. Not occurring in really 100% rhythmic succession, but they are low-frequency earthquakes and low-frequency swarm. How many times can I say low-frequency in one video? How many times? And then we did see another outburst right here around, I'm going to say, 734 UTC. Very intriguing, guys. Very intriguing. I have not seen that in quite some time. Actually, I don't remember seeing that at all with Kilauea Caldera. And here's a look at one of the stronger LF events. To me, it almost looks like a DLP, deep long period event. Some more high frequency quakes thrown in the mix. High frequency quake, another one, another one. And a few hours ago, let's go to the most recent data just real quick. Some of the most recent data. It looks like there really is not too, too much happening right now, but uh, they another outburst of these low frequency swarms could start again since we saw a pretty much two episodes with the most interesting being this one right here that was the most interesting right here uh i do believe it could we could see another outburst for sure possibly in the next 24 to 48 hours and spasmodic tremor we did see one of those and multiple high frequency earthquakes within the magnitude 1 to magnitude 2.5 range so keep an eye out for more guys i will be back soon have a great day and God bless.